So last week Thursday, I was at the library doing some work, and somehow I ended up on Twitter. And I noticed that on that day, OSAP was trending. So okay, um, why don't I make a thread and basically share everything I know about paying for school and all the different like tricks and tips that I use. And so I made that thread, and it went viral. It broke the internet. She ain't gotta tell me what to do with it. I already know. Been knew I had a juice with it. Y'all ain't ready though. Hey guys, Tommy, we're here. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about 10 tips to pay for school and secure the bag. Let's go. First, a quick story. So last week Thursday, I was at the library doing some work, and somehow I ended up on Twitter. And I noticed that on that day, OSAP was trending. For those of you who don't know, OSAP is the Ontario Provincial Government Student Loans Program. And whenever a student loans program is trending, whenever a government student loans program is trending, that's usually not a good sign. So sure enough, I clicked on the trending topic, and people were upset because student loans were getting cut. And so people like me were trying to figure out how the heck are we going to pay for school now? And so, you know, a lot of people, you know, were really upset. Long story short, people were upset. And then so, you know, I was sort of, you know, because I have a scholarships website at TLA.ca, I was like, okay, you know, I was just basically messaging people on Twitter and saying, you know, if you guys are having trouble with paying for school, check out this website. You can probably find some scholarships and help you pay for school. And so for some people, you know, I'll click on their bio and say, okay, maybe this girl should put nursing on her profile. So I say, you know, oh, I see that you're a nurse. If you want to find nursing scholarships, you can go here and find scholarships just for nurses and, like, there's a website, you know, there's a, there's a search function for basically scholarships just for nurses. And, you know, so, like, that was actually getting a lot of, you know, that was getting pretty good responses. And I'm like, okay, well, what else can I do? So, okay, um, why don't I make a thread and basically share everything I know about paying for school and all the different, like, tricks and tips that I use. And so I made that thread, and it went viral. It broke the internet. Okay, actually, it just got, like, 3,000 likes and 2,000 retweets. But for me, that's actually really good, especially because I only have, like, 20 followers on Twitter. So obviously I was like, yeah, you know, this is great, you know, I'm going to be Twitter famous. But then the, the, the dark side to that is the fact that, you know, it really speaks to the fact that a lot of people are really having a hard time trying to pay for school. And like, this is like a really big problem that a lot of people are having as well. So I'm like, well, what else can I do? So then I started thinking, I'm like, okay, well, why don't I make a video? Because right, some people might not, you know, some people may not be, see the thread on Twitter or some people may, may not like reading. But if I make a video, everyone can, everyone can see it and engage. So without further ado, here's the video and here are 10 tips to pay for school. So you can hear the bag, get your coins. All right, so let's get to it. 10 tips to pay for school and secure the bag. And that is a picture of me and my family at my high school graduation before I had over $60,000 in student loans. Oh, and that's a picture of uh, my sister Tifa. She was not able to be there, but she's there in Photoshop. So let's step one, apply for scholarships. Very obvious. The first thing I think you should do is apply for scholarships. Scholarships is literally free money. And, you know, one of the reasons why I think a lot, and there's a couple reasons why people don't apply for scholarships. I think the first one is probably, well, I'll start with the easier one, and I'll start with the more bigger problem, right? The first thing is that some people worry that they don't have the grades or they don't have the extra curriculums to apply. So, remember, one of the persons I DM'd on Twitter about this whole scholarship thing, she said that, well, you know, one of the reasons I don't apply is because my grades aren't that good. So, let's dig into that a bit, actually, to see if that is a valid reason. So, she was a girl, right? So, let's say we're looking for scholarships for females. So we go in here, we see that how many of these scholarships actually require you to have high grades? So, okay, this one does actually require you to have good academic standing with a strong GPA, but their definition of a strong GPA is like a B minus. B minus is like a 60% average, you know. I'm sure most of you who are watching the video probably have at least a 60% um, average. So, again, this one, let's see. Okay, no grade requirement there. Eligibility requirements, Canadian citizen, female, have not received the award in the, before in the past. Again, all right, so that's two scholarships right there, neither of which require you to have any sort of grade point average. Okay, but you know, okay, but let's say you're still not convinced. Maybe, you know, you say I'm just cherry picking data or whatever. Another hack I recommend you to do if you want to find all scholarships, if you want to find scholarships that don't require some sort of grade point average or extracurriculars, is um, go on the website and just type in essay contest. Here you'll probably be able to find scholarships which, so these are scholarships that typically all that you have to do to apply is write an essay. And again, for a lot of these scholarships, you'll see there's no actual grade point average requirement. You just have to write an essay. Again, so no grade point average required. So if you don't have the grades, you don't have the extracurriculars, you can just spend some time, write an essay, and you can get qualified for a lot of scholarships. Okay, so that's one of the problems. The other problem a lot of people bring up is the fact that 
scholarships take a lot of time, and that is true. Yes, scholarships do take a lot of time, but if you're currently working a part-time job, scholarships is on a per hour basis, scholarships probably will probably make you more money than working at a part-time job. And let's do some math to prove this point. So let's say the average scholarship takes about um, 20 hours to apply for a scholarship. Yeah, most scholarships will not take this more, but just to, you know, assumption 20, 20 hours. Let's say the average scholarship is $2,000. I'm kind of using worst case scenario for both of these because just to make just to make the model more fair for everyone watching this because I know people are gonna be cynical. Or, you know, just to make them all, yeah. Okay, so twenty two thousand um, dollars, and of course you know people are gonna say, well, okay, this is cool and all, but first of all, the odds of me getting every scholarship I apply for is pretty unlikely. So let's say your success rate is twenty percent, right? Um, I think this is actually a fairly um, accurate success rate. For example, I've applied to a lot of scholarships. I've got rejected for a lot more than I've got accepted for, but I think if I look at all the scholarships I've ever applied to, success rate of 20% is probably fairly accurate. Especially if you're spending about 20 hours on the scholarships, which I'm definitely not doing, and my success rate is, is higher than that. And my grades and my extracurriculars are not that great either. So, so scholarships are payout. So that means you basically need to, so at a 20% success rate, you need to apply to five, five scholarships. You need to apply for, it should be about five scholarships in order for you to qualify for a $1,000 payout. So this means on a per hour basis, if you're getting two dollars for a scholarship and you're spending 20 hours on each one and you need to apply to five, you're making about $20 per hour when you apply to scholarships. Now, people might also be wondering, well, you know, and if you compare this to a part-time job, like for example, like in my, my first, one of my first part-time jobs was I was a janitor in, the, in my first year of university. It was actually a pretty good job, it wasn't that bad, my manager was good. By the end of the day, the only thing I was getting out of that job was money. I don't really have anything to show for myself after I get my paycheck at the end of the day. With scholarships, not only do you get it, so not only the financial aspect is this better than my job because I was making $14 an hour, with scholarships I am making about $20 an hour. So not only financially does it make more sense to apply to scholarships, with scholarships too, there's a lot of intangibles. You know, sometimes they have dinners where you get to meet the donors. Sometimes they put your name in the newspaper on a website which helps with you for branding. You can talk about the scholarship you want on, on, to an employer. All these kind of things also give you intangibles and help you build your personal brand and can help you a lot more down the long run than a part-time job. So that's why you should um, apply to scholarships. There's a lot of really good scholarships websites out there. It's Lila.ca, but again, this is my, I'm not gonna, you know, this is not just gonna be a big promo for Tila. There's also a lot of other good scholarship websites out there. Scholar Tree is a good one, Wyconic, Scholarships Canada, check them all out. Okay, so create an event for scholarship deadlines. So another thing I typically do when applying for scholarships is that a lot of times I'll either forget about the scholarships or I'll just procrastinate. So one of the best ways to do that is if you have a calendar app, again, I recommend Google Calendar because I just find it very convenient, but you can use whatever calendar app you have. Go on your calendar app and let's see, let's find the scholarships. Okay, so let's say for example, I want to apply for this engineering scholarship. All right. So typically what I'll do is I'll, so let's say for example, I want to apply for this engineering scholarship, right? So typically in the past, you say, okay, I'll make a mental note of it to apply for the scholarship. But of course, inevitably, I end up forgetting to apply. So one of the best ways to solve this problem is that um, you go on your calendar app, I use Google Calendar, and you just basically create an event for the scholarship deadline. One thing I should probably add as well is that if you have an Intel account and you save the scholarship, this will actually automatically send you an email notification, I think seven days and 24 hours before your scholarship is due. So then you don't have to do this whole process. But if you don't have that, you can, what you can do is you can create an event for the scholarship. And basically what I would typically do is I'd say, okay, so and so let's say for example the scholarship is due at midnight. So it's due on July 3rd, right? So let's say for example the scholarship is due at midnight. What I'll typically do is I'll set a reminder just before, so let's say for 9 p.m. that the scholarship is due. And usually I'll add like a brief description of the scholarship so I actually remember what the scholarship is for when I'm applying. And usually a link back to the original scholarship website. Okay. Yeah, so typically what I'll do in a situation like this is can you provide to do, do? And then I'll add a notification to remind me a day before the scholarship is due, two hours before the scholarship is due, and maybe seven days before the scholarship is due. That way, the seven days is good because if I and honestly, and if you're really bad with procrastination, it's kinda like setting an alarm clock. You can just add like a bunch of notifications. That way if you just keep on getting pinged, you're more likely to get more nudged and then you're, more like, you're less likely to procrastinate. You know, you just copy and paste. And then this way, when the scholarship is almost coming up due, 
I'll get a notification in my calendar like that. But again, like I said, if you have an account on Attila and you um, save the notification or save the scholarship, you automatically get notified, I think, seven days and seven days and 24 hours before scholarship is due, so you don't have to do all this stuff. Next, save scholarships in Google Doc and Google Drive. So one of the things you find with scholarships is that very often um, you get very repetitive questions asked over and over and over again. And so it makes things really easy if you just have like a repository where all your scholarships are saved, you can just go back and check for future scholarships. Um, I really like Google Docs and Google Drive because A, Google Docs, they work offline, so even when you don't have internet, if you're on the bus, if you, for whatever reason, you just want to work on it, you can still access Google Drive, Docs and Google Drive. The second thing is that the search functionality is actually very, very good. So if you like type in something that you wrote in the text itself, Google is actually very good about finding those questions. So let's say, for example, you apply for a scholarship where they ask you, when is the time of experience difficulty? If you type in the Google search, if you if you type into Google search, you know, when is the time you experience difficulty, it will actually pull up documents that show you a time you experience difficulty. The other thing, the reason I really like Google search as well is that if you have, like, for example, if you upload a PDF, you can actually scan the PDF for the text on that PDF. So even if it's not a Google Doc, with a PDF that has that question, you can find it as well. So I really recommend Google Docs for um, that kind of stuff. Look for offline scholarships. So I put sh here because um, this is a low key one that a lot of people don't think about. So let's just keep the secret between me and you. Essentially, you know, just kidding. Essentially, the way this works is that a lot of times, you know, some scholarship organizers are still a bit old fashioned, I guess you could say. And they typically may not even put their scholarships online. So maybe they just send out a letter every year, a brochure, a poster. Or maybe they put it online, but they don't put it like, maybe some places they just send a poster, some places they put it online. So with a lot of these scholarships, if you just go to your school's like academic, if you go to your guidance counselor office or you go to your academic services office, sometimes I'll have a bunch of posters up of different scholarships that are not available on the website. And I put sheer and I put that little gift mean thing there because it's like, this is super low key way to apply to scholarship that a lot of other people are not thinking about. Because most people just think about online scholarships. Read applications of past winners. So, th and losers actually. So, you know, a really good thing to help that's useful for applying to scholarships is that um, if you want to, so basically, if you're applying for a scholarship, right, you want to see, okay, well, people have won the scholarship before in the past. What did the application look like? So I sort of know, where, you know, where, what, where I'm at and like what I should be aiming for. Um, and actually, the losers can also be really effective too, because maybe, for example, you notice a pattern of people who are loose. Maybe they're like, maybe they're too arrogant or they didn't talk enough about experiences or whatever, whatever. Then that might also be a guide as well. So reading past applications is very useful. Um, Attila has this on their website where you can basically see past essays for different scholarships. And the, the cool thing about this is they don't only show the losers, some um, the winners. Some people who actually got denied for scholarships as well also have their essays on there. I put some of my essays there as well. What quality of application do they have? Right, so for example, like if you apply for them, if you want to apply for so this has scholarships for both um, schools and for programs. So for example, when I applied to Western, applied for the Western National Scholarship essay, I got declined. But you know, you can probably still, you know, read my application and see, you know, and then you can find and figure out, okay, why did I get declined? And then you can do your application differently. Interest free student loans. So this one is very interesting. So student loans are not quite as good as um, scholarship because again, scholarship is free money, you never have to pay it back. You get the money, say goodbye, you never have to worry about it again. Interest-free student loans, you still have to pay back, but there's no interest, which essentially is, part of it is actually ends up being free money if you think about the time value of money, which is beyond the scope of this video. But the general idea of this is that the fact that you're someone's going to give you money and not and basically not charge you for it for like the next one or two years, if you're a bit younger, you may not understand you know, why this is really awesome, but just understand like this is a very, very good deal. Take advantage of it. Um, so yeah, so there's some student loan, actually student loan websites you can check. Um, Attila, I'll see here. You can also search for student loan websites on this website as well. Student line of credit. So typically, people who are in like um, programs, I guess, with high earning potential, where they typically are uh, lower credit risk. So stuff like you know MBA. Um, if you want to do medical school, business, and if you go to certain like business schools. They'll typically give you a student line of credit. And these line of credits are actually really good because a lot of times interest rates will be very low. So, for example, the one I have with TD right now, because I'm in the Ivy Business School, which is like a well known business school in Canada, they offer me a very competitive interest um, student line of credit, very good deal. I think I only have to pay prime on my interest. And there was actually a point where like, I think interest rates were so low, I think I was paying like 2.75% in interest, which is, again is a very good deal. So, yeah, you can click on that link and you can find out more information about that program. Like I said, they typically, you know, again, because they're giving you a loan, they want to make sure that you're low credit risk. They want to make sure that you're going to have a high capacity to repay. 
So typically, they have to be very selective, meaning only students in certain programs. But I think sometimes, if you want, if you get, if you're able to get your parents as a co-sign, or if you're able to like sort of like negotiate or sort of sweet talk your way, there's, these things are typically very flexible, and they might be willing to give you a loan. Okay, so get a job. So this one seems very obvious, but hear me out. So you know how a lot of people say, you know, I need experience, but then you can't get experience. You know, you know how a lot of jobs will say, oh well, you know, we want people with experience. But you can't get experience because no one will give you a job. And you can't get a job because no one will give you experience. And it just creates this annoying infinite loop. Trust me, I've been there. It sucks. I feel your pain. There's actually programs that are specifically for people like us who are students, who need jobs, but we don't have a lot of experience yet. Hear me out. So there's this really cool program by the Ontario government called, I think, Summer Start Company thing. Basically, the idea is that you start a summer company, you start a summer business, and the Ontario government will actually give you money to fund your business. I found this program really, really cool. I applied, I didn't get in. But actually, I think, you know what, I th I'll probably share my um, my application on the Intel website, so you can probably check that out later. But anyway, it's a very cool program. I encourage you guys to check it out, if you're more of the entrepreneurial kind. And if you just want to get a job, you know, you want to you know, want to do that route as well. There's this really cool website called Talent Egg. I didn't, I just, I didn't really go look through it too much, but it seems to be like it's aimed at students, it's aimed at like young people who are either recent grads or internships who are looking to get jobs, and again, don't have a lot of experience. So if you're in that boat, really encourage you to check that out as well. And you know what? Not everyone has to work for a big company, or you know, if you want to work for a big company, that's great. If you want to just try something different, I strongly encourage people to look at startups as well. Startups are really cool. There's this really cool website called AngelList. It's basically just a bunch of jobs for startups. And one thing I like about startups is that it's very flexible. So you know, they just they you know, so they they're the hiring process is not as formal as other companies, so it's easier for you to sort of like kind of bend the rules to get in. For example, like let's say you studied sciences, but you want to go for like a marketing role, or maybe you study like art or English and you want to go for a designer role, right? So if you're able to like, you know, they're a lot more flexible with their roles, I encourage you to check it out. The founder, uh, Naval Ravikant, super cool go dude, follow him on Twitter, but I digress. Oh, so those are some websites to check out. If you know, if you want to like maybe, you know, if you still, if you're something that you're interested in you know, getting a job, getting an internship, um, there's two really cool blogs. There's two really cool articles to check out. How to get a summer internship is written by my friend Trevor. It's really good. I think he works. He worked at. He, talk, he talks about like how he got his first internship at Shopify. How he didn't have a lot of experience. It's very good. I also wrote an article on how I got my interviews at Facebook, Google, and Bridgewater, which are three top top companies in America. So you can check those out as well. Brand campus ambassador. This one is very interesting. So. You know how sometimes when you're on the university campus, maybe you're in your student services building, typically around maybe the first, during the old week, the first couple of weeks of the year, freshers, you'll see a lot of people like, you know, promoting like, you know, Red Bull and download my app, you know, the Facebook for textbooks or something like that. You know, because a lot of companies really want to reach and touch, engage with students. And then, um, and so, but, and then a lot of companies will actually pay students to promote their products to other students. And typically I think people, people I think people probably think these are things like, you know, or Red Bull or maybe like, Bumble or Tinder and all these different apps, but you know, or Fashion Over and all these different Instagram things, and like you need to be an Instagram influencer to do this. But a lot of reputable companies like Google, Facebook, Deloitte, LinkedIn, a lot of companies actually do this as well in order for them to get students to apply for their company. So if you're interested in something like this at all, I really encourage you to check it out. Um, typically, what you can just do you can just Google X Campus Ambassador, Camp X Campus Ambassador, where X is typically anything that you're interested in. So, for example, like, I know LinkedIn has a very good campus ambassador program, right? So you can just go search Google LinkedIn campus ambassador, and you see all these different like programs available. So click on one of those programs, and it's a really great opportunity for you as well to um, to have more opportunities. Student deals. So sometimes when I'm feeling extra bold or extra broke, I'll literally just go into a store and be like, "Hey, do you guys have any deals for students?" And I feel like 50% of the time, maybe 40%, I don't know, I made that number up, they'll actually say yes. So they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, we actually have um, you know, this program for students, you know, just show me your student ID. Or sometimes they'll be like, oh, well, you know, we don't actually have any student, but you know, for you, and that's what they always say, for you, 10% off. So that's another really cool thing to check out. I know J. Crew is a store I shop at often. They get really good student discounts. Metro, when I'm at university, when I'm back at school, um, during the week, I try, well, I don't, I try to go on Tuesdays because they have like 10% discount for students. I think Sobeys has that too. If you're in a university town, a lot of grocery stores will have this, or you can maybe even try asking. They can set that set up. Um, there's an SPC card. So SPC card is basically this card for students. You show it, you get some discounts. It used to be really big back in the day. Uh, so that's another great way for you to get discounts. So a lot of companies, again, just by virtue of you being, and also it's not just um, for deals too. Like sometimes if you want to apply to a conference 
or if you want to apply um, what else like maybe you want to go to different events are happening they'll typically or like even like transit tickets right they'll ha like for example if you commute to work every day in there in summer see if go transit or whatever transit wherever you live new york transit london transit has special transit program for students and so that we can get maybe like a cheaper fare ticket just by virtue of you being a student so always check to see if, if there's student discounts people are always trying to help out students people are trying to get students to use their products so that's something else you can always definitely take advantage of Alas, all good things must come to an end. This is the end of the video. Um, let me know what parts of the video you found most helpful, what parts you really liked. Also, let me know what parts of the video you didn't like. Maybe I was talking too fast or I should have talked more about this or you didn't like how I have the video here, the slides here. Whatever, let me know. I really value your feedback. Uh, also, I know people learn in a lot of different ways. People consume content in different ways. So if you prefer watching, there's a video, YouTube video. If you prefer slides, there's, there's Google Slides you can look at. If you want, prefer listening, maybe you want to listen to this video or this podcast while you're cooking or you're at the gym or you're cleaning your room. You can listen to it as a po spot podcast Spotify, um, podcast on Spotify or iTunes. Again, all of this will be linked in the description below or in the description wherever you're watching or listening to this. There's also be a blog post as well if you prefer reading or a Twitter thread. Um, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on the gram. That's the video. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. I can't remember I actually said that because I always make fun of people for saying that and now I'm saying it. Am I a hypocrite? Anyway, Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. See you guys next time. She ain't gotta tell me what to do with it. I already know. Been knew I had a juice with it. Y'all ain't ready though. Outside, got the vision going. I'ma make it go, go.